the magnificent Potala Palace in Lhasa had been the seat of the Dalai Lama and his leadership of the Tibetan nation since the 17th century till the fateful day of 17th March 1959. Tenzin Gyatso, the present Dalai Lama, is the 14th in the line of succession, revered the world over as a messenger of peace and compassion he is also known as Yeshi Norbu, the wish-fulfilling gem, and Kundun, meaning the presence. He was also known as Lamo Tondup till the age of two, the day when his life and that of his nation changed forever. Tibet was in transition, waiting for news of the next Dalai Lama. Search parties were scouting the length and breadth of the country with divinations, visions, and indications. One such party landed at the home of Chokyung Sering and Deki Sering, parents of Lamo Tondup in Taksa village. Thank you for being in this world and knowing that the world will be a better place for having you walked upon it. On return to Lhasa, an examination of all the cases and results of many tests that Lamo Tondup underwent, he was identified as the reincarnation of the 13th Dalai Lama, Tuptun Gyatso. After a gap of six years, the Tibetan nation had finally found their 14 Dalai Lama, the supreme spiritual leader of Tibet. His Holiness is probably the only few true evangelists of peace in the world today. Lama Tondup was given a new name, Tenzin Gyatso, derived from the Tibetan words for wisdom and ocean. The word Zalai also means ocean in Mongolian and Lama means spiritual teacher. Put together, it means a teacher spiritually as deep as the ocean and also ocean of wisdom. His Holiness, Dalai Lama Ji, Vushanti Dut, Messenger of Peace. Not only a messenger of peace, but Shanti Dut ke lava Shanti ke devta bhi. Or, unki energy jo that suits everyone in India and abroad. And that's why today he has fallen wherever, everywhere. Because he's truly, he's a true Buddhist in every sense of the world. Events were unfolding fast, and soon history pitted the compassionate young 15-year-old Dalai Lama, who was still discovering the wonders of the modern world, to lead six million Tibetans without a regular army against the might of the victorious Red Army of the People's Republic of China. Even as odds were against the Dalai Lama, in a show of remarkable wisdom and leadership, he went to Beijing in 1954 to try and improve the situation. However, the onslaught continued and thousands were killed. The Red Army's grip on Lhasa was tightening, creating acute anxiety among the city's population. One winter day on March 10, 1959, a restive crowd of tens of thousands of Tibetans gathered, determined to thwart any threat to their young leader's life and prevent him from going. On 17th March 1959, the Dalai Lama with a heavy heart escaped to find support for his beleaguered nation and lead his people. On 3rd April 1959, the Dalai Lama entered India beginning a journey of struggle for his people and for Tibet.
This epic struggle is not just for Tibet, but is a quest for lasting peace, equality, respect for human values, and understanding between nations, countries, and all humanity. You are a wonderful man. May you live long, and may thousands of Dalai Lamas come into the world and make this world really peaceful. Uh, Lama Ji, the, the work that you are doing to bring peace to the world, uh, we thank you for that. And uh, please uh, keep spreading that message and helping this world. The world now knows the young Tenzin Gyatso as the Dalai Lama. During the world, carrying the hopes of the Tibetan nation and commitment to promote human values of compassion, forgiveness, tolerance, religious harmony and understanding, peace and non-violence, and to preserve Tibet's Buddhist culture, knowledge and heritage. The one thing that I would definitely want to do is bow down in front of him and say thank you for doing what you've done. The world reciprocated with honoring the Dalai Lama with awards, medals and honors, including the Nobel Prize for Peace. In the words of another remarkable man of peace, a fellow Nobel laureate and good friend, Archbishop Desmond Tutu of South Africa, only two men can fill Central Park in New York to listen to their words, the Dalai Lama and another good friend, Nelson Mandela. I really wish to go and visit and get some blessings of him so that I can develop some more insight about how to look at life from a different angle. The moment you see his pictures, uh, the moment you see uh, his, his short messages which are available on the internet and all of that, uh, there is something in those you know, messages and his pictures which uh, sort of transforms or takes you to a different world. However, the ones he cherishes the most are those from universities the world over and he simply delights in what he calls a company of fellow teachers. But I think it comes from something within him. And there is a, a, so that, which is why when you're in that you do feel that you have been touched by something beyond this world. Humor and laughter is another facet of the Dalai Lama that brings out the young Lama Tondup and the innocence of the child in him. You know, my father always described it, uh, described the way the Dalai Lama used to pray, walk, talk, eat, and his humor, about his humor, comment on small, little things, and he just loved him. Such a smile, that smile is always like, you know, so positive, so energetic. I want to see him, at least he should live at least 100 years, and he should bless us with all of his positive energy, like, we want him. And still, at the age of 78, he carries the struggle and hopes of 60 million Tibetans longing to see him back in Potala. Dalai Lama, may Allah 